Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today, we're making tapache, and that is a fermented, like a Mexican drink, and it's really good for digestion, and it's supposed to be just really tasty. So we're gonna make it kind of like sort of traditionally, but not really, because I don't have really, you're supposed to have like a, it's like a block of like hard sugar. I don't have that and I'm not going to the store for it. So we're gonna use brown sugar instead. Uh, we're gonna pick through all of these pineapple pieces. We're gonna pick out the best pieces, kind of scrub them up a little bit. They did get a little bit moldy. And so I wanna try and make sure that this stuff is not gonna get moldy. So we're gonna kind of be pretty picky with what we have in this um, bowl. So I'm not sure how much we're gonna have left over. Basically what we're gonna do is for each half gallon jar that we get, we're gonna add in one cup of packed brown sugar and we're gonna add in two cinnamon sticks and have, I think it was like four, four cloves, four whole cloves. So we're gonna go ahead and just start picking through all of these, kind of being pretty picky, but just mostly scrubbing off the mold for the most part. And uh, yeah, it's just time to get started. Okay, so now that we have all of the pineapple stuff cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to load them into the jars. I have some water on the stove that is warming up that we can melt the sugar with. And now we're just gonna pack the jars. That's basically all there's left, really. So now we're gonna work on actually making the, dissolving the sugar in the water. And like I said earlier, we're gonna use one cup of packed brown sugar for each one of these. And I'm gonna dissolve it this way. So hopefully I can use less hot water. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try and combine this into five jars. There's a lot of airspace in there. Okay, I think that's gonna be a little bit of a better ratio. So now, we're just gonna top this off with water. Perfect, 77. So basically with this, you want it to be anywhere from like room temperature to like at most, I would say like body temperature. I usually try and air more on the side of room temperature, kind of like upper 70s maybe. So now I'm just gonna pour this over it. Before I get to the bottom, I'm gonna double check and make sure there's no silt at the bottom. Make sure we are good. How perfect is that? Okay. So now we're just gonna repeat that five more times. Okay, so while this is melting in there, we're gonna add, I've seen various, various uh, numbers, but I'm gonna go with four. Let's go with five. Five cloves in each jar. go and two cinnamon sticks and I'm gonna leave this one without any cloves or cinnamon just to see I'm curious how it tastes I've never had tabache so I have no idea what it tastes like there we go and then with each one of these that you're pouring in if you're doing more jars than one you want to make sure you're making sure to test each temperature of the temperature of each one just to make sure like you don't want to just assume it's going to be okay 
because if you put water in here, if you put water in there that is too hot, it will kill the bacteria and the microbes that are on there and it, it won't properly ferment. And it either won't ferment or more than likely, it'll just go bad. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do, we wanna make sure that we're keeping this weighted down underneath the brine. If you have something that you can like kind of cover it with inside, like uh, I don't really know what to use for sweeter ferments. Oftentimes if it's like a vegetable ferment, I'll use like an onion peel or like, uh, uh, what else is there? Sauerkraut, <laughs> cabbage peel, leaf, something like that. But so um, we're just gonna risk it and I'm gonna make sure to come through and scrape off the top. And that's another reason I decided to go with the five instead of six because there's more to hold on to in there okay so we're just gonna weight all these down you don't have to have this pickle pipe on here you could use an airlock you could uh, i've even seen people just use a cloth uh, it doesn't make sense to me to use a cloth because this is tapache and we're trying to make from my understanding, you want to exclude oxygen when you are working, when you're trying to like culture like an alcohol type thing. And if you're trying to make more of a vinegar, that's when you want to include the air in it. So it doesn't make sense to me to cover it with cloth, but people do. So do with it what you will. And then you can also just use a regular mason jar lid, but this is a fruit ferment. So it's gonna, it should begin activating and, and fermenting pretty quickly. Like it could even see bubbles as quickly as like a few hours. But um, realistically, it'll probably take a few days. And so you want to make sure that you're burping it a lot. You want to, by burping it, I mean like if this was like a regular mason jar, right? You're going to come in and you're going to just crack it open and close. And you'll hear like a little fizz or a pop or something like that. And if you don't do that, these, these jars can hold a fair amount of pressure because they're made to go in the pressure canner. So it's not like you're using some, you know, dinky little jar, but it does have limits as to how much pressure it can actually hold. And if you, uh, if you allow the pressure to build up to a certain point, it can explode. And, or at the very least it will, um, I've had it happen. I've done it before where like, you'll have the mason, jar, the mason jar lid on top of there. And then it'll, it'll just like pop and it'll like crack the lid and just stuff will just come oozing out. And so that's not fun either. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the room. You wanna keep it away from like kombucha or kefir, things like that. But you can put it with the rest of like the wild yeast fermentation or the wild fermentation stuff. And we're gonna make sure to put it inside of some kind of a dish that can catch any kind of overflow. Cause this likely will be pretty active and it's gonna overflow some. So I will bring you back when there's something relevant to show you. So I was just sitting over here doing my computer work and this one just started oozing and I could hear it. So I wanted to go ahead and show you. It's been three days. Yeah, three days. It's been one week since we left our tapache to go ahead and ferment while the pineapple skins to ferment and turn into tapache. But I wanted to go ahead and bring you guys in close so you can kind of see some of the action that's going on in here. I didn't really get a chance to film a whole lot of it. I got one little clip of one of these kind of starting to um, uh, seep the carbon dioxide and stuff, but that's about it. And so I wanted to go ahead and show you even now a week later how active it is. So you can see here all the little bubbles that are in there. And then, you know, you can see here, she's got a bunch, a bunch of bubbles. And this one too. I just going crazy. This one. And you can see kind of the foam that's at the top here. So, and you can see these ones here, they're still charged. And this one. The next step with this is just going to be to filter out all of the, uh, to filter out the pineapple skins and things like that and actually put it and plant it into a bottle. So that is the next step and that's what we're going to do here. Cool. 
clean top. Nothing funky, nothing moldy. Okay, so the ideal thing to do with this would obviously and most definitely would be uh, to filter this into something glass. I don't really have much glass left, so I'm gonna go ahead and just filter it into the stainless steel pot. So once we get that one filtered, and this one that I poured is the only one that actually spilled over. Pretty good luck with it on that one. I left a pretty good space. Pretty good head space. Okay. Now, so now we're just gonna dump this through another like mesh strainer that has a finer mesh to it. Plenty of headspace. And just close it up. I forgot that I have this little one that is also kind of the nylon material, so I'm going to use that one instead. the flavored tapaches and so now we're gonna do the ones that I didn't add the cinnamon or the cloves to just to kind of see what the flavor is like. Okay. This one has some calm yeast on top, the rest did not. So these two, I'm gonna put a rubber band over it just so I can remember later on down the road which one's which. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a taste test. And I was really surprised, just a side note, I was super surprised that there wasn't a whole lot of mold on top because this recipe said you wanna go ahead and ferment it for like a couple of days. And it's been a week. So I was really surprised. I thought for sure that it was gonna be molded. Uh, so I was very, very pleasantly surprised. So we're gonna taste this. We got the plain one. I just I wanted to make sure that I had a full enough bottle so I didn't pour off a tremendous amount. It's pretty good. It's sweet, but not like puckering sweet. Pretty good. Not very sour. That one's sour. Wow. kind of almost an astringent flavor to it. That's really interesting. It doesn't taste bad. Like I'm not repulsed by it. It doesn't taste ran rancid and I'm not concerned at all about it. It's just a very unique flavor that I've never experienced in a ferment before. The closest thing that I can equate this one to, like I said, is like almost astringent. It's gonna be interesting to see how these actually turn out once they're fermented in the bottles. So I'm going to ferment those. Today is Wednesday. Hopefully I will be able to get to this by this weekend and I will keep you posted and let you know how these things are all going. I just realized that I almost made a very important, well, mildly important. You don't have to do this. I've done many batches where I haven't done this, but if you are very safety conscious and you just want to make sure that nothing's going to explode on you, I forgot to do one of these bottles in a plastic bottle. And this one is kind of like a, it's a, a test bottle where you can feel the buildup of the, car, the, of the um, carbonation inside of it. You can kind of feel it just with the squeezing of the bottle. And, and also it'll start this one in particular. I have another one that I have going with a different batch of some mango stuff. And that one, 
even the, the lid started to kind of bubble up. Like it was pretty powerful stuff. So that stuff, like this little lid, it'll start to bubble up. So put it on there nice and tight. So it'll definitely, it'll, it won't, none of the carbon dioxide will escape and it'll just start to build up. And you can see like, it's very squishy. Give it a day or two. And this stuff this is going to be like hard as a rock. Like you could, you could probably heard somebody with it just hitting them. Okay. So just had to show you that. So we are back and it is time to taste the tapache. We have three different bottles here. This one is the actual, this was the test bottle. This is the test bottle that I should have paid more attention to, but didn't. And it is solid as a rock. I'm not, I'm really surprised that this thing did not like just explode. If you can see the lid, I don't think you can, but the lid is totally bubbled up and the bottom is so bubbled up that it won't even necessarily sit flat. You can see that it's kind of rocking back and forth there. So that is the test bottle. <laughs> it won't even stand up straight. So, all right. And then this one is the regular, um, just the regular tapache with like the cloves and the cinnamon and stuff. And then this is just the plain one. So we're going to taste test both of them. We're going to try and open this thing. Hopefully without too much incident. And these are refrigerated. And keeping them refrigerated when you're actually ready to open them is a really big part of opening any kind of fermented drink because it helps the first in some way the refrigeration helps it to hold on to the, the CO2 in the bottle and set in, in the, the uh, in the liquid rather instead of letting it out so it just it makes it less explosively bubbly Pretty charged stuff. All right, so this stuff might take a really long time to open, but we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, my way of opening these without them exploding, I've had pretty good luck with them without them, you know, blowing the top rather. Um, I hold it with, you know, you have the, the two sides and I hold it with the, the little clasp bar thing on the back and I kind of hold it like with these two fingers here and my thumb on top. And then kind of just, I keep it, try and keep control over it so that I can easily reclose it very quickly and with force. Oh yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get this open and I will bring you back when I actually get this thing uh, open and we can actually taste test these things because it's probably gonna take a little while. So now that we got the uh, tapache all debubbled, and Robert's home now, so he's gonna help us taste test them. So this one is, I'm not gonna tell you, because I'm gonna see which one Robert prefers. Oh, it's different. Pretty quick. Got it mostly debubbled. It smells good. <laughs> it really does. Okay. on the palate with this ginger tea. Fresh hot ginger tea that was made here. Mm. Mm. Smell. Less of a smell. This yeah. one has a stronger smell. Mm. Very faint smell. Pineapple. 
less pineapple, more sparkly, mm -hmm. more bitter. Mm -hmm. Less sparkly, more pineapple, sweeter. There we go. This one's plain pineapple. This one is typical tapache with like cloves and cinnamon and stuff in it. Mm -hmm. So, mm. well, but this one's just literally fermented tapache. It's a fermented pineapple. Mm. I'll drink them both definitely tonight. Is this one your favorite? because I like lots of sugar in my drinks. Because this one's my favorite. <laughs> Here, you can have the rest of that bottle. Yeah, I have one ounce of uh, sugar in this. Yep. One ounce of sugar in this ginger tea with a little bit of lime. Mm -hmm. I think it's lime. Lemon. Yeah. 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 So, that's all there is to making tapache, and you can even make it to where a non-ferment lover en enjoys it. I prefer it, like I said, I prefer it with the cinnamon and the cloves, and he prefers it plain. So just kind of stop smacking my ear, please. Uh, mm. <laughs> you're doing that on purpose, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, I figured. I intentionally know you enough, so I figured it's probably there. Okay. That's all there is to making tapache, and that's all there is to making this delicious drink that anybody will like, including a non-ferment lover like Robert. So I hope that you guys definitely give this a try, especially if you are using, you have any extra leftover pineapple rinds and things like that, or <laughs> definitely want to give this one a try. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to uh, subscribe down below if you're interested in videos like a fermenting, canning, dehydrating, freezing, and all sorts of other food preservation videos along with gardening and the occasional chicken video. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time. Bye.